Mr. Casey Wong. Thank you for being here today for this interview. Hi. Uh, we are Shiv, Nitz, and Anil, and we would like to ask you a few questions. Sure, go ahead. Our first question is relatively simple. I think I want to express myself, and I want people to really uh, understand me without me talking at all. So it's almost like looking at uh, an object, then they can understand that we can communicate without a spoken language. So I think art like sculpture or installation is like that. It can be so powerful and, and without, without words. And so is this one of the reasons why, why art is so important to you and why you value it? Mm, I think so, yeah. Um, what's your favorite pieces of art that you created and what is your motivation and influences? One of my favorite is the paddling home. Yeah, it's quite hard to paddle and I'm getting seasick inside. Floating house uh, that was being sailed on Victoria Harbor. Yeah. I, that, that is a very important piece because uh, it's very dangerous. If you are not careful, you can die inside that house and get drowned on Victoria Harbor. So you know, it's made a big impression on me. experience uh, life. I walk around and uh, I pay attention to what I experience. Like I, actually yesterday after uh, your lesson, I went to town and I, I walk around in, in Sai Kong town and I take a lot of pictures in, inside a temple and in the middle of the alleyway. Have you been there before? Yep. Yeah, I took a lot of pictures. I can share with you later on. Yeah, and the other ways are... Yeah, so, so I'm like drifting. I'm drifting, I'm looking without a purpose so, so I can totally be with the environment and then my idea comes from what I've seen and I've been. Um, how does traveling around the world help inspire you to come up with new art ideas? I think it's the other way around. It's like uh, I first have the idea of a skyscraper and then I realize not only Hong Kong uh, have skyscraper, a lot of uh, big cities, or even cities that seemingly doesn't need a, a lot of uh, skyscraper, and they still build skyscraper like Dubai. They have so much land, right? <laughs> Hong Kong have a lot of skyscraper because we don't have a lot of flatlands. So, so I was thinking about the, the personal skyscraper project, you know, bringing the skyscraper to places to like you know, contrast it and take pictures. Speaking of Hong Kong, um, what do you think about the new idea of localism in Hong Kong that's happening right now? I actually uh, think it's a good idea. I mean, of course, they can call it localism, but at the end, it's really about respect to one's identity and culture. And so, it's so obvious that uh, Hong Kong have a unique culture that is uh, different than mainland China and different than the rest of the world. So. Localism doesn't mean that uh, we are strong and the other are weak or, or uh, suppressing the others in order to bring oneself up. No, it's not like that. Localism means really understand where one come, come from in terms of culture, identity, as well as uh, uh, the language, for example. So, so at the end, it's all going, going back into the community. So you don't have to have an enemy in order to uh, have a strong identity. But it's, it's kind of looking at yourself honestly. So your art portrays many social issues in Hong Kong. Do you support, is this one of the reasons why you do art to show the ideas of localism? And do you support soon activism? I think being an artist is already an activist, right? Usually artists are sensitive and they are like kind of a little bit faster than the rest of the people. So by doing a piece of work about social issues or politics or the environment, this kind of action itself is already an activist work. 
but of course using the art as a way to express oneself. So that is actually better than just politics because it can be aesthetic, it can be beautiful as well as uh, meaningful. Who or what is your motivation to continue your work? I think it's not like other person or a higher being or that motivates me. It's really it's about how I want to spend my time, this life, with this limited time. Like, uh, like how do I want to exist? That's the motivation that uh, causes me to like, become an artist and do all the stuff that I do. So it makes my uh, existence, my short existence, a uh, very interesting uh, way to present oneself. Yeah. I think art is everywhere. There's a quote from this famous Chinese artist Ai Weiwei. He said, everything is art. Everything is politics. What's the meaning of everything is art? For example, if you go to a restaurant, usually you order through a menu, right? In the, on the menu are uh, pictures of food. So that's art. It's like photography, right? And I don't know, maybe one day you grow up, you are going to have a girlfriend. Or maybe you already have. <laughs> so how do you choose your girlfriend? That's art. Beauty, right? Beauty is art. And so, so I think nobody can escape from art because it's part of the human being, human culture. So this interview right now is art, basically. Say again? This interview is art, basically. What we're doing right now. Not necessary, though. Yeah. It, the way I look at it is, it's not like is it is art or it's not art. The way I look at things is like, does it have a lot of high artistic potential? or it has a low artistic potential. But if you look carefully, everything has some kind of artistic potential inside. Same thing with politics. Yeah. Uh, how do you use sound and choreography to, to help and inspire to make, uh, to help you inspire and make? Uh... Mm, usually, uh, it comes a bit later in terms of sound. I think about form first. I think in, in the protest uh, series of work, I think about sound. You know, like one time I made this uh, project called Pinocchio, which is uh, about our chief executive. And uh, I use a pre-recording sound, like a speaker uh, built in, because uh, you don't want to be yelling continuously for a long time, so the technology can help. So it, it, makes, it makes things more effective for you? makes life easier and also make it more interesting because right. technology uh, resolve all this uh, problem and also in the rally uh, in the public protest there's like thousands of people and uh, you know there's so many noises it's all competing against each other it's like the interview right now you know yeah. I'm talking to the to you guys and then all those kids downstairs is like yelling and yeah. yelling right yeah. protest is kind of like that would be uh, don't forget the beginner spirit yeah because uh, when we first started we always uh, work our best and really exciting about everything but uh, as time grow go on you might forget about that you might get lazy you might not interest anymore so not losing the beginner spirit is important so even like me you know I seems like an old dog right but actually, I feel you know, I'm a beginner every day. So how, your art is very different from the common type of art around the world. How do you think different styles of art should be taught and made? I think it should be uh, uh, looking at each individual student separately and see what their potential 
you know, some 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 students are big, some students are small, some are more, you know, talkative, some are more kind of introverted. I don't think uh, good art good art education should be like you know, cookie stamping. You know, it gotta be a diversity that is tailor made to the individual. Yeah, I think it should somehow try to be up close and personal. It's like a customized suit. Yeah. Yeah. Rather than uh, you know three size or one size fit all. of the 1910 uh, is a commemoration for uh, revolutionists who got assassinated by the Qing Dynasty assassins. So I'm building a, a big metal piece of work in honor for this secret hero. So it's really important. Two things, to honor the dead as well as informing the future of the Hong Kongese. So uh, that's what I'm working on right now. And another, what was the other part of the question? That's like two, oh, the future. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think the future, I'm, I'm gonna concentrate just making my life interesting. So living my life interestingly, living my life interestingly, that, that's gonna take a long time. So I'm not gonna be uh, teaching a lot. I'm gonna just be spending a lot of time in the studio making artwork. And uh, that's, that's, uh, that's what I'm gonna do for the next 10 years. Thank you, Mr. Casey Wong, for your time and attention. It was a pleasure having you here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah.